we just rendered out the boat. This is Sailing Frida Vispi and we call this episode our two worst nights at Dagger. It was extremely rolly. We just invented a new sport, fishing flag slalom. Then we also had a nice sail over to a relaxed anchorage on Fermentera. I still think it's luxury. This has been written previously in the logbook. Our story began in Jarmot on Isle of Wight, where we bought a Woki for the Seven Pilot Saloon. We named her Frida and Visby is her home port on Gotland. We are a middle-aged couple that left our business life to go sailing. We have sailed more than 7,000 nautical miles along the Atlantic coast of Europe, out to the Azores and into the Mediterranean Sea. We will show you our sailing, the boatworks we do and the destinations we see. Experience wildlife, historic sites and local cultures together with us. We are not sponsored by anyone, so it helps us a lot if you become a subscriber, thumbs up or a comment makes us really happy. Big thank you to all of you that watch our videos. We are Anderson Gitter and this is our cat Litsa. The adventure continues on Ibiza in the Balearic Islands. Making coffee. It's 6 o'clock, so both from one morning here. We just ran the, uh, the boat, or actually it ran us. Uh, here in Anchorage we saw there was a Dutch boat that were a little too close. And Anders said, before we went to bed, if the wind turns, we, we will hit it. And, uh, but we didn't contact the skipper, we thought maybe we are a bit to on the edge, etc. Uh, but the wind turned and also came some strong gust, which wasn't forecasted. And well, then we hit each other. So it was a bit messy. Let's see what our side camera has caught. Left, you see our port camera, and to the right, the starboard. This was the crash that woke us up. You can see how the bounce made us swing rapidly. Since we were sleeping down below, it took a little while for us to get up and see what had happened. But when we came up, we could see that the boat next to us was quite slow, so we realized we had crashed. But we could see that the crew on the other boat has woken up as well and uh, wanted to check if they were alright. This moment I really regretted that I didn't say anything when I saw them anchor a little too close. First we tried to assess the damages, but it was difficult to see in the darkness. But I noticed that our swimming ladder had been knocked down, we usually take it off at night. The next step was to try to solve and prevent it from happening again, so I suggested that we should take some of our scoping. Anders seemed to agree, but he didn't really confirm, so I felt that I should do it. So neither of us took the initiative to, to take the scope in. Then he suggested that the other boat let his scope out. Have you done anything on your side? But they had decided to okay. pick okay. the anchor up and move to somewhere else. Okay. No, then the wind picked up in a new gust and made the two boats come dangerously close. This time they were about to hit our port side, so we will focus on that camera for a while. Together we managed to keep the boat apart, but one of their crew members made a dangerous maneuver. They let a little bit more of the chain out again, which made them slide in behind us again. At this point we still have our long scope left five. Despite the headlights more chain out again, the boat was swinging back towards us several times. It was quite stressful. Using fenders to put in between but uh, since the bow were coming towards our side at different places all the time, it was impossible to tie it up anywhere. Then they let even more chain out and they drifted in behind us. But we all knew that that was not a real fix. 
Somehow we had to get the boats, including the anchors, untangled. And I realized that we had not shortened our scope. So I went to the bow to do that, but didn't tell Anders why I went to the bow. I start to bring our chain in. The other boat make a third attempt to bring up the anchor. Anders has started our engine and will slowly try to move us for forward to give the other boat more room. We start using our lights to look for the mooring boy because Anders don't want to run over it. The other boat has now realized that their boy is on our other side, on our star starboard side. That means that the anchor chain is crossed. Then Anders can see it about 20 meters on the starboard side with the strong lamp. That means that we can't go straight ahead, we have to go around it. When he turns, he loses sight of it. Since I'm standing in the bow, I try to keep my eyes on it, but that means that I can't turn around to speak. And Anders usually have trouble hearing me when I speak forward in his steering. He asks if I can see it, but he can't hear my reply. He therefore doesn't realize that I'm actually trying to help him. And he's also stressed by the situation. I try to explain, but he can't hear and gets even more frustrated. I can see how the boy is tangled and explains it to the other boat, but others can't hear anything and keeps yelling about more information. It was tangling in our snubber line, but finally we got the mooring boat free. We can now build a strategy of how we need to move the boats to release his anchor chain. And meanwhile, the wind had turned again, so now the boy is at the starboard side again. But this time it's not tangled to our snubber line. The yeah, other boat asks us to move forward. And this asks me to point the light at the boy, and I do, but the light is not strong enough for him to see, but I can see. And this start to follow my hand signals, and I use the bow thruster to point us in the right direction. After several minutes of careful maneuvering by both boats, Anders and the other captain managed to get the boats free. We managed to get him untangled, uh, and uh, he lifts his anchor and uh, re anchoring somewhere. But, uh, well, now we have been away for about a half an hour to sort that out. It's stressful. Oh, we couldn't fall asleep. I had put out some uh, fenders, but uh, obviously not at the right place. He knocked our swimming ladder down, and it's also a bit bent. That is the damages that we can see. And uh, we tried to light, put some light on his boat, but we couldn't see any damages on that. So, a brush morning. <laughs> Boat life. Yeah. Now we're going to enjoy this coffee and settle down yeah. with both our anchor watch and also looked at land and the scene that uh, it seems like we are hold, still holding so they haven't kind of messed with our anchor because that's of course a risk. A first test on anchor life because we had, had quite smooth anchoring until no. Decided <coughs> to stay up. That's the boat that crashed into us. We stayed up mainly because we wanted to make sure that we were not dragging after he's been pulling in our anchor chain. The wind has calmed down. We still have a dark cloud, and I just heard a little bit of rumbling. So it probably was the thunder gust that we got. So don't anchor too close. 
Before they left Anchorage, uh, the other boys came back to check if we had uh, found any damages when it got in daylight. Thank you for that. And we are also beginners. Yeah, we are beginners. That's why we didn't tell you because we thought we don't want to tell everybody to keep away. So we said, okay. Yeah. Before you came, just 10 minutes before. He was trying to anchor closer than you were. <laughs> so we said, no. Okay. Did you have any problems? Yeah, yeah, but you did no. Nothing is is damaged on your boat. Okay. Our swim. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have we have learned a lot. Next time somebody goes that close, we're going to tell them. We are leaving for the start and are on our way to Esiondal on the south side of Ibiza. And uh, the wind is predicted to be very light. So the distance is about 15 nautical miles and uh, we estimate that it will take about three hours, mostly motoring. This is Santa Antonio, one of the party places at Ibiza. We were ashore for about an hour and uh, went maybe 200 meters up. I found a little brewery where we had a beer. We found a place called Kibuzim. And I think I'm the only one that has a boat battery with me. Let's go back to the beach and the boat. Now we have been in Port Destorant, found a microbrewery, so we had a beer. And now we are going back to Frida. And the first boat you see is not Frida, that is Anna. Another Swedish boat. She's pretty, isn't she? Laying here. After that little flashback to the day before the drama, we continue our sail to Esjondal. One of the islands, small islands that form like a small archipelago here. We are in the archipelago now. So there is some islands. Yeah, the islands over there. One island that we will pass, a high one that we Quite narrow strike, I think I saw on the map, it was about 
500 meters wide. But uh, we're motoring, so it should be no problem for us to keep to the scheduled track. And, um, well, quite nice. Except that we had got the wind straight in the nose. But maybe when we come around this corner, we can sail a little bit the last the last hour or two. As the other. In Spain, as I would say, as the other. Uh, it's supposed to be one of the hip places on Ibiza. Um, I don't really know if I've lived there, but uh, let's check it out. The ferry. Now you can understand it's fairly big. Ferry was further away than I thought. Over there. That's a house with a view. turned it got more and more rolly and uncomfortable but we wanted to be sheltered from a strong northerly wind that was in the forecast life at anchor From the big boat, 245,000 euro per week, and uh, they even managed to put their passengers on the bar, which I'm sure they intended to do. Well, that was fun. Sure, full of sure now. Yeah, they passed by. Just a few meters. One more time. Hope they're having fun. 
uh, drivers continue into the night and uh, the music from the disco started. Party night! Party at the pizza! And the big cruiser is still there. And tonight I actually chased away one of the boats that are anchored over there and thought he was laying too close. As you can see, it's still quite rolly and the strong wind has still not come. But due to the lack of sleep from the night before, I tried to sleep anyway. The wind has turned to northerly, but it's much weaker than forecast, and that means there is nothing to flatten out the swell from south. Then it kind of died out totally. But not the swell. Well, that was a little bit of irony, but uh, it had high down a little bit. We are preparing to leave Esionda, this extremely rolly place. We are going to Formentera near the harbor and hope that it will be better there. Well, now we're leaving Jandal. That wasn't really our cup of tea. I don't, I don't think we would have liked it even if it had been cold weather. And now it was extremely rolly. I don't think we have had it that rolly since we had 26 knots on our way home from a source. So, haven't slept much tonight either. And maybe that's also why I'm a bit grumpy. Going to be surfboard? Well, at least we got to do some sailing. Yep. And breaking through and a nice breeze in the sail made me in a better mood. And the weather seems to be nice. I think we could could use a little bit of something nice and calm. A bit of upwind sailing from the other to from the You can see over there, so it's not far. But nice and calm after that night. Sheer pudding. I thought we needed a little treat. Mm -hmm. When we left Asiondo, I could not find Litza. She had hidden herself so well. We usually take the harness off during the night and I simply could not find her. But I knew I had seen her inside after we closed. And uh, the door. So she was somewhere, but I was a bit concerned anyway. Oh. There is Formentera, oh. and there is the marina. What? What? Very rolly. And there we go. We have a little damper. Where we are. Ah. And we are. 
aiming at anchoring somewhere along this beach, but for uh, an avalanche, it's best that this side um, normally it gets best, best reviews, but with the forecasted wind and swell, it seems to be best to be closer to the to the harbor. So I'm a bit confused. The really best place would be on the other side of the harbor where there is a field of buoys. But we haven't been able to contact them, so we haven't booked them in. The negative thing they have said about this anchorage is that the ferries create some swell. So now we are about to experience that because one ferry is leaving. There is some small ferry coming and a big one coming. So, but this is nothing, nothing compared to what we experienced. This uh, night. <laughs> this night. Yeah. Now that was a roller coaster. Yeah. And this is like rocking a cradle. <laughs> Bagpipes. I guess it comes from that ship over there, and that's the town of and harbor of Fromentera behind. Really nice. And if I turn around, in the distance you can see mountains, and that's Ibiza. So that's how we are laying right now. Anders is talking with his father, so far you can hear it. And much, much, much calmer than John, John Dahl was. This is Formentera by night. And as you can see, it's nice and calm. What a contrast to us yesterday. So nice and quiet. It's fish. It's fish fishy. And this is launching our dinghy. Because we are going to make a little Provisioning with the dinghy. Now we are on our way to do some grocery shopping. So we have left Frida and we are on our way around to the other side of the port harbor here in Palmontera where there is a lagoon and according to Google Maps, if you pull up, if you pull up the Dinghy on the beach in the lagoon, you will be on the back side of a supermarket. Ferry is coming. There is the ferry. Very, very clear water. about 50-60 centimeters here in the channel. Uh, the store should be somewhere on this side. Isn't that the supermarket? I can't see it. And this is cleaning his feet. Mine is still, well, kind of dirty after walking in that slimy sea grass. We can rent a little. Careful. Careful. Managed to dispose of our garbage here. Come on. 
White eyes, but I don't see the supermarket. So this is a small supermarket, easily accessed from the dinghy. The restaurant, right next to the marina. We don't have a long ride back to our bus. No. We lay next to, there is a, you can't see it from here. I think it's our mast that we can see though. Nice to be on shore for a little while. The shop is that building there, but on the other side, in, and there you can rent scooters and even cars if you want. Sky day. It was a bit cloudy in the morning. Yeah, it's, on... and it's not too hot, and that will that helps also for the solar panel. Yeah, and there is a, a light breeze, so it probably blows the heat away from the panels. Time for some grill again, and it's so big. Extremely clear water. I can see fishes swimming down under the boat. Wouldn't it be cool to have the grill with some fish swimming below? Come on, little fishy. You're quite safe. It's steak, not fish for dinner. I'm watching a YouTube channel called Captain Mart. I think he would enjoy standing like here and grill. I still think it's luxury to be able to, to stand like this. Why do really? After a fun and relaxed day, we got an even more relaxed and beautiful sunset evening. Enjoy this! I tried to film with my Insta360, but it didn't turn out very well, but I managed to save a few snapshots. Now I've been out snorkeling for about half an hour and uh, it was fantastic. The water is so clear and uh, in the Posidonia there is plenty of fish, actually. Maybe not so many different species, I don't think. I think I saw maybe six. Um, but it's uh, so nice to see them. And it's a uh, good 
Uh, yeah. And just doesn't jump in the water. There is horses on the beach. Uh, yeah, I see that. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Sailing Freedom Whisper. In the next episode, we will continue to explore the Balearic Islands. So